How's it going everybody? Cody back again dropping out another video. Right guys, it's like 25 past 11 at night. I've been, I didn't sleep very well last night. I got next to no sleep. Um, I was up at half six because I was doing an interview at 10 past seven on BBC Radio Wales about the rollout of parva spray and stuff like that. Is it going to increase violence? Is it going to quell violence? Um... I was on, and then um, shortly after me at 8 o'clock, the scumbag that's in charge of the Prison Officers Association, Mark Furhurst, who's the national chair, he did an interview. He sounded like the cat that got the cream, to be honest, because he's obviously got parva spray for all his members now. So um, you're going to see pepper spray or parva spray, which is a, um, a synthetic um, CS gas, if you will. Uh, similar to what the police have, it's going to be rolled out in 90 prisons from January 2019. Um, it's been a long, long day, guys. Uh, I'm still looking for... Uh, I put a video out earlier, a vlog, if you will, earlier about asking for prisoners that have been in Chelmsford, Exeter. They now want Bedford as well. Um, someone sent my vlog to a former prisoner, a well-known prisoner, from Cornwall, Devonway, uh, that spent time in Exeter, Luke. So I'm very grateful for that. I've patched him through to the news. And the thing is, the news thing referenced prisons, guys. Um, because of the parvis spray thing that's taken the main crux of today, um, there are other stories about the conditions, about obviously Bedford and like um, Exeter Prison. There's just, it, prisons are failing across the board. It's as simple as that, guys. Uh, I'm going to read a story in the Sun newspaper now. It's not everybody's finger. I'm having a pint of Foster's as well because it's been a long ass day. I'm extremely tired, guys. My internet's so slow. It's probably going to take, probably upload this in the morning or something like that. Do you know what I mean? But, oh, I'll tell you what. To you guys, right? I feel sorry for everyone that's in prison, man. Do you know what I mean? The, ban, the Prison Officers Association lobbied for the smoking ban. Right, it increased violence twofold. Why? Because by banning tobacco, you're antagonizing prisoners because tobacco has long been used as a stress release. I know people want to say, prison officers want to say, and the POA, Prison Officers Association, want to say it's because of the health of prison officers. Prisoners were only allowed to smoke in the cells, they didn't, they smoked everywhere, um, and on the yard, right, which is an open space, right? So they should still be allowed to smoke. Prison office lobbied for the smoking ban, threatened to pull a judicial review of Her Majesty's prison service if they didn't get it uh, speeded up. It came in, guys. It's caused anarchy. Another thing as well, by banning tobacco in prison, what does that cause? That makes it become contraband. Contraband, the, shoot, the price shoots up, which incurs debt. Where you've got debt in prison, you've got fear, intimidation, bullying and violence. It's made the problem worse. It's the POA that have asked for this, right? And it's come in. And then they want to cry wolf when they're getting smashed up and down the landings. My heart bleeds not. Like I say, I don't condone attacks on officers, guys. But at the end of the day, you've got to look at the reasons why prisoners are kicking off. Frustration, boredom, regime, treatment, conditions, mental health... Just bored. It just goes on, guys. It's a long, repetitive, stressful, ongoing situation. Anyway, this is a story in the sun. Everyone's favorite, uh, not everyone's favorite newspaper, sorry, or toilet roll, whatever you're going to call it. I'll tell you what that is. Ice cold, man. I needed that. Anyway, headline reads Pepper assault. Prison officers will be given pepper spray to help them combat violent lags. Prisons Minister Rory Stewart is providing the parva spray in 90 jails across Britain. Prison officers at 90 jails across the country are to be armed with pepper spray that incapacitates lags the sun can reveal. Prisons Minister Rory Stewart will today announce that after a successful trial in four prisons, the parva spray will be rolled out nationwide as the government finally steps up the war on drug fueled violence. It comes less than a month after prison officers staged a mass walkout in protest at the smashed eye sockets, broken arms, legs and jaws they suffer in attacks behind bars. The parva spray is a type of pepper spray. Judged significantly more potent than CS gas, it targets the prisoner's eyes, causing closure and severe pain. 
for up to 30 minutes. Speaking to the Sun, Mr. Stewart insisted the government was acting only after serious thought, but he said it's vital prison officers suffering on average of one attack every hour were protected. He said, too often prisoners are not assaulting not only other prisoners, but also prison officers, brave public servants who work every day to protect us. The trials are already showing that pepper spray can reduce serious harm and often without the officer needing to use it. The mere fact that an officer is wearing the canister on his belt acts as a deterrent and can prevent incidents getting out of hand. The move comes just two months after the minister said he'd quit the job if he hadn't managed to bring under violence under control within a year. Mr Stewart has previously been slammed by Tory backbenchers for moves to reduce the prison population by scrapping all custodial sensitive of less than a year. He has repeatedly spoken of the need to be tougher on violent criminals. Assaults and self-harm behind bars reach staggering levels fueled by an explosion in the use of psychoactive substances and illicit drugs. The parva spray will go into all male jails from January next year. A report by the prison's inspectorate last night published uh, yeah, published into the conditions HMP Exeter, claiming it was very violent with widespread illicit drug use and poor living conditions. Mr. Stewart, uh, Mr. Stewart even told the Sun, safer prisons are vital for us all. They don't care about prisons, guys. They care about the taxpayer and the prison officers. And our prisons, our prison officers are doing one of the most important jobs and heroic jobs in our society. We must give them means to do their job. He's got his tongue so far up the prison officers association's ass. It, he, honest to God, it's scary, guys. The prison officers association general secretary Steve Gillen said this was our initiative and we are pleased that the government agree with the union. This is a step in the right direction and long overdue. It's not. It's like in the powder keg that is the prison system. So we goes on, brave officers need the tools to do their jobs. This is by Rory Stewart, the prisons minister. The levels of violence and drug use in some of our prisons are shockingly high. Violent prisons are dangerous for our hardworking, dedicated prison officers, and they are in danger for our whole society. Therefore, my first priority as prisons minister is to make our prisons safe. How? First, by recruiting extra prison officers. They are now 3,500 additional officers working in our prisons than they were two years ago. That's because they cut over 7,000 guys. Second, we have passed a law only last month which doubles the maximum sentence for anyone assaulting a prison officer and we are investing in giving more officers training and support on the wings to deal with the violence. Our best officers, listen to this, our best officers can often diffuse any situation with sensible words, often quiet ones, but sometimes words are not enough particularly with prisoners that have smuggled in and taken aggressive new drugs like spice. Too often prisoner assaulting not only other prisoners, but also prison officers, brave public servants who work every day to protect us. We must protect them, which is, this is why I am issuing them with this new equipment. We have recently issued body-worn cameras, so any violence is immediately recorded for the prosecution or turned off when they're giving someone a kicking, guys, that's what they do. We have rolled out CCTV cameras across our prisons. We are issuing police-style fixed handcuffs as well. And we are investing in intelligence to break criminal, one sec, the second bit, gangs, as well as new scanners to detect anyone smuggling drugs. Today, I'm taking a further step of announcing we will be giving parva spray, the equivalent of pepper spray used by the police, to all officers who, do, who deal with adult male prisoners. We have done this only after serious thoughts. If pepper spray is used inappropriately, it can simply provoke more violence. It's going to be used in, um, inappropriately, isn't it, guys? So now we have trialled it carefully in four challenging prisons, right? It was trialled in Wheelston Prison, in Hull Prison, in Preston, and in Risley, right? We have developed a detailed training course to make sure every officer understands how and when to use the spray and when not to. But the trials are already showing that pepper spray can reduce serious harm and often are found in whole prison without the officer needing to use the spray. The mere fact the officer is wearing the canister on his belt acts as a deterrent and can prevent incidents getting out of hand. Of course prisons must remain sorry, an effective deterrent 
but violent individuals are a much danger to the prison, other prisoners as they are to the prison officers. The disorder they create prevents other prisoners from receiving the education, training and support they need to land a meaningful job upon release and turn away from crime. Safer prisons are vital for us all. They, for all of us, sorry. They will mean you and me, all of us, are less likely to become a victim of crime in the future and our prison officers are doing one of the most important and heroic jobs in society. We must give them the means to do their job. That's the end of the story, guys. Now, let me just pick up on a few points. Now, firstly, guys, rehabilitation, right, is a bullshit word. It's a made-up word. It's a politician's word. So people like the Justice Secretary David Gork can wear a suit and feel important whilst getting paid in excess of £100,000 a year while fiddling his expenses. Same with the prisons minister, Rory Stewart. The guy who has rolled this out, guys, he's got his tongue so far up the prison officers' association's ass. It is scary, guys. It really, really is. Now, I just want to make a point, right? Now, they're saying here, he goes on here that he said, but after trial showing, hold on, let me find the piece. And often without the prison officer having to use the spray, the mere fact the officer is wearing the canister on his belt acts as a deterrent. And, and can prevent incidents getting out of hand. Now, prison officers, guys, have had this for, what, t well over 10 years, you know what I mean? And then some. It's not stopped people attacking p uh, police officers, has it? Like I say, guys, the guy, the, the, the Rory Stewart guy, right? There's a picture of him here. I'm going to put it at the beginning of the video. It looks like something out of a Spider-Man, like the bad guy out of a Spider-Man movie. Like I say, his attitude is all wrong. He's going on on Twitter that it's going to mend... Um, like, it's going to mend relationships between prisoners and prison officers. No, it's not. I've spoken to former prisoners today. I am a former prisoner. I've spoken to people that are still serving time in prison. And guess what they've said, guys? The battle lines are drawn. We're ready for it. We're not going to take this lying down. They're ready to fight, man. Do you know what I mean? It's going to go. It's going to happen, guys. And like I say... Does he, does he pay tribute to long-serving prisoners' families, right, who are not guilty of any crime? They're only guilty of loving and supporting their loved one. They travel the length and breadth of this country. It's a very expensive due supporting somebody in prison. Does he pay tribute to them? No, 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 no. It's all about government, Tories. I hate the Tory government with a passion, guys, you know what I'm saying, right? Prisoners are leaving prison, uh, sorry, prisoners are leaving prison in body bags. On his watch, does he do anything? Is he is he is he reducing the prison population? Is he freeing IPP prisoners? Is he the money that he spent around prisoners is on drug detection? I think like he give ten million to the ten worst performing prisons, right? Three million pound for upgrades, right? That'll just mend what was broken, right? And it won't even stretch that far, right? Three million pounds over ten prisons is a drop in the ocean, guys, right? And the fact is. Prisons are dilapidated, they're run down, they're squalid. You wouldn't house your dog in those conditions. You wouldn't feed your dog the food that you get in prisons, right? And like I say, people want to say, oh, the prisoners and stuff like that. Prison isn't there to respond to society's emotions, right? 99% of prisoners are going to be released. Unless you're serving a whole life tariff, 99% of prisoners are going to be released back into society. It's how we treat them whilst they are in prison, which will dictate, dictate sorry, and determine how they act upon release. I think rather than making prisoners out of our students, we should be making students out of our prisoners, right? Violence, violence will not, violence will be met by violence, but they think that because they've got some little spray on the, on, on the buckle, on, on their waist, right, that that's going to stop prisoners from kicking off. Prisoners that are, have got psychosis or they're having a psychotic episode, is it going to stop them kicking off? No. Are other people going to get caught in the crossfire or the prisoners when it, when it gets into their eyes and nose and airways and stuff like that, it's going to cause serious problems. There's another story that I'm going to do on this um, that uh, people with a lot more academic qualifications than me, former governors and stuff like that, are saying, look, this is a breach of the prisoner's human rights. It's inhumane. It's not legal. You shouldn't be bringing this in. Sorry, guys. It's just, oh, that is nice. Like I say to you, it is now 20 to midnight. I've been on the go all day. I've set up interviews. I've done interviews, I, shh, poof, my mind's broken. Um, I've been tweeting the prisons minister all day, giving him grief. And like I say, a lot of people that were supporting the prisons minister, Rory Stewart, right? The guy who's come out with this. What it happened, right? 
There was unprecedented levels of violence in prison. We're seeing record levels. Like I say, the smoking ban, what the POA lobbied for, has contributed twofold to violence increasing in prisons. Then, because they haven't got the numbers and prisoners are fighting back, they don't like it, so they walk off the job, which is banned industrial action. They was ordered back to work. They had little secret phone calls between the Prison Officers Association and the POA Union and Rory Stewart, the prisons minister. He give them a pay rise, he's give them rigid bar handcuffs, he's give them parva spray. And they've also got extendable batons as well in certain prisons, like what the police have got, guys, koshies, as we call them, right? What next? Stinger grenades. And remember, guys, as well, the Prison Officers Association National Chair, Mark Furhurst, if you look further down my timeline, he wants tasers, tactical use of tasers in prisons. And you know what, guys? The, the, the POA, the National Chair, and the Prison Officers Association Union have actually got more power now than the Ministry of Justice, who run prisons. They've got the... Pardon me. They've got the P, they've got the prisons minister over a barrel. I genuinely do believe that, guys. They've given in. And you let me know, guys. I'm so interested to know from you. Have you got a loved one in prison? Have you been in prison? A lot of you have. Some of you haven't. Um, like I say, let me know. Do you think that by arming prison officers that that's going to reduce violence? Or do you think that prisoners are going to fight back? How long will you give it before a prison officer is when, when this comes in in January, when a prison officer is unarmed, they take his keys, they take his baton, they take his rigid bar ankles, they take his parva spray, and then they've got the keys, and then they can get onto other wings, and then they've got parva spray in the possession. I can see the headlines right now, guys. My balls are hairy, they're not crystal. But mark my words, I can see what's going to come. The fuse has been lit, and it's been lit by the Prison Officers Association and by the Ministry of Justice. For every action, there is a reaction, and that's what we're going to see. Anyway, guys, I'm waffling on. This is getting warm, so I'm going to enjoy this. Like, comment, subscribe. Cody out.